this is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map Cabana Republic and spawning as the Cyan Empire on the left side from Team H2O, it is Kuro. And on the right side as the yellow allies from Mate, it's Vindy's. And that is right, AVE Cabana Republic, you may be thinking you ha know how this is going to go. But you have no idea because this guy is Vindy's. Vindy's, he is known for his naval openings, but he's also known for being a little bit wacky, a little bit unpredictable. He's kind of a more stable, potentially less skilled version of C9. Now, Vindy's, don't take too much offense at that. Of course, I love you, man. But let's be honest. I think most players would agree on that. Both of these players, if they were in their prime between Vindy's and Kiro, it's going to be a pretty even match. I don't know how they're feeling this day, but I got a couple of replays from them. Apparently, they're pretty good games. Vindy's going to be taking out a couple of those structures. Kiro, on the other hand, it looks like he probably just went with the either dual or triple dojo. Looks like triple dojo opener. And then he's going to be scooting around, grabbing potentially both of the oil derricks. Of course, he wants to grab this oil derrick before the engineer of Vindy's can, or even better, he wants to kill off that engineer of Vindy's and then also get that oil derrick. Then he gets the $500 cash back. The extra dojo is basically paid for in, you know, just a couple of minutes, or not a couple of minutes, but in like 30 seconds or so, that dojo is completely paid for. Oh my gosh, Vindy's. The Sim City is real, folks. You guys may be thinking that this is StarCraft or something, but no, Vindy's. It's not so much that he does this every time, but he does this quite a bit. Now, this is very important. He's locked in that one Javelin Soldier. There's no way for a Tengu to get in there without glitching on top of the walls. And if you glitch on top of the walls, your Tengu may very well be stuck for the entirety of the game. So it's like, okay, you killed a Javelin Trooper, but now you can't move your Tengu until those walls are sold off. And Vindy's may just never sell off that wall segment that your Tengu is stuck in. So it's going to be, at best, it's going to be a risk. And, you know, you don't want to be trading one Tangu in the early, early game for a Javelin Trooper. And then, it's basically completely safe. I mean, they would have to eat through the walls to be able to kill it. So, that's going to be keeping him a little bit more safe. It will also prevent his airfield from getting hardcore camped. Because uh, you can just park, like, you know, five or six Tangus above an airfield and then just camp it and be happy to go lucky. But in this case, you can't actually do that. Vindy's going for the expand. That third refinery should be up momentarily. As you can see, he set two engineers way up north. Not something that you often see, but we've got our first six Tangus out now. Will he be able to pull off the kill on one of these Apollos? We'll have to see. No, he doesn't get either one. And the Transform Micro is not real from Kiro. He easily could have saved that Tangu, but he did not. He was not on top of his control. As a result, drops down one of those Tangus. Something that we tended to see a bit more out of uh, Empire players like Profloff and Queen Oni was almost perfect transform micro almost all of the time. And it's like in those Tangu versus Tangu battles, sometimes the transform micro would just get so, so crazy. But of course here, Apollo versus Tangus, the, the dynamic is a little bit different, but the concept is the same. And of course, Apollos can't transform down to the ground to kill the Tangus that have just transformed. So you lose that kind of aspect of it. Vindy's really doesn't want to deal with these. Oh my gosh, did Kiro actually get eyes on this? No. Wow, that scout up north, that was really close to actually killing off a thousand credits worth of stuff for Kiro. That was close to being a very cost-effective move. Now, the, these Apollos may actually be able to intercept a Tengu or two. We'll have to see. Now, let's go ahead and throw some health bars on. One of the Apollos may go down. It does get eliminated, but... There's still a fair number of Apollos out on the map, and by a fair number, I do mean one, which is going to be more than enough for these Tangus to deal with. Weakened Tangu does transform. He gets the kill in this other Tangu. Again, wow, Kiro is getting so, so close to actually spotting some of those units. We do have our first Hydrofoil moving out, an Assault Destroyer as well. Of course, the Hydrofoil may just be used for the weapon jamming abilities just to help that Assault Destroyer be that much more powerful. On the other hand, if... Kiro goes tier 2, which as you can see he already has, then those Chopper VXs are going to be entirely less effective against the, well, Apollo, Qua uh, Apollo Hydrofoil combination. One of these Tangus could get focused down really quite quickly. Vindy's needs to make sure that he doesn't stick around, and there is no point defense drones on these Tangus, at least not just yet. 
so that's not going to be too much of a factor quite yet. Now, the Harvesters are being forced to be pulled off the line. A good move there from Kiro. Vindy's needs to make sure that he does something with this Assault Destroyer. Hopefully, he doesn't just get it, like, surrounded or killed off or anything like that. We'll actually get the kill on that, on that Striker VX. Down on the ground, freshly popped out of that... Out of that War Factory, now the Tengus, they are going to have a hard road to hoe with that Assault Destroyer right on top of their stuff. And of course, any more units that pop out of here may just get insta-crushed. We'll have to see if Kiro is able to transform them in time. No, he's just going to pause production until he can deal with this Assault Destroyer, which is really quite a, it's really quite a nice move here by Vindy's. A second Assault Destroyer going to be coming on out, but this is still Tier 1s, which means no Tsunami Tanks coming out of that... Uh, Naval Yard, however, the second Assault Destroyer could be over here assisting his buddy. I'm not actually sure if this is enough tangus to focus fire down this Assault Destroyer. It looks like it is. The Yari Mini Sub didn't get a great impact there, and one refinery will be going down relatively soon, as there is going to be the Assault, uh, the Point Defense Drone is going to be activated on top of those tangus, and the Apollos are getting forced away. The number's just a little bit too great there. Vindy's did grab one of the oil derricks, however, we do have now that what would have been the fourth refinery for Kiro, but it's actually kind of the third refinery since he lost one of his reps in his main, and his main has been quite disrupted. Tank Busters are finally out on the field, which they need to go ahead and start getting to work on one of these Assault Destroyers. Of course, with that, like, spider hole micro or whatever you want to call it, you can avoid damage from the Assault Destroyers with relative ease. And up to that heroic status, going to be doing just a little bit of extra damage on the right side here. Yari mini subs finally going to be doing a bit of damage. Tengu's also going to be eliminating one of those oil derricks really quite nicely. Good, good decisions there from Kiro. He needs to make sure that he's identifying as many weaknesses in uh, in Vindy's as he can to try to get whatever edge he can. Because after losing both of your main refineries, harassing your opponent's third taking out the oil derrick that he has, you know, taking your own quote-unquote fourth, are all really good moves and things that you need to be doing. Is there actually a Vindicator on the map? There is one, but the aircraft carrier is more going to be the trouble for Kiro. Man, Vindy's, this is the type of stuff that he goes for. It's like quick tier three into aircraft carriers. He should have fired out a blackout missile just to lock down the MCV. Oh, no, no, he did. Never mind, I'm kind of bad, but... Oh my gosh, Vindy's, will he actually get it? I'm going to explain what that was in just a moment. For any of you who don't know, the aircraft carrier did go down. But for any of you who don't know, as you saw, there was a bit of a, uh, a bit of friendly fire going on there. One Apollo did get focused down by Vindy's own forces, and that's because that harvester was was frozen. Now, what, that's a bit of a risk, and again, this is only for you guys who are kind of new to Red Alert 3. It's a bit of a risk because Apollos don't actually always do damage when they crash down. Nice kill there with that Vindicator. I'm assuming that's what that was. I don't know if he just sacrificed that heroic Yaring Minisub or if he tried to do something else. But Apollos, when they get taken out, sometimes the, the debris from the Apollo crashing does damage to units and structures that it lands on, and it's just enough damage to kill something that is frozen. That Black Hole Armor is so close to actually saving that Assault Destroyer, but it was not meant to be, and as the Point Defense Drones activate, these Tengus will be able to escape, albeit barely. And actually, it looks like a couple of Peacekeepers could go ahead and clear out that building, but it would, of course, be a little bit inefficient there for Vindy's to do that. Now, Kiro, he's got back up to that four refinery count, which is really quite nice for our own power player. He's managed to hold on to his naval yard for the majority of this game, and he's got a reasonable, or he had, I should say, a reasonable number of Yari minisubs, but he did sacrifice all of them much earlier in the game, or just a little while ago. He, he's gone tier two, which means, of course, Naganatana cruisers and tsunami tanks are viable options, but will he actually go up to Shogun battleships, or will he kind of stick on this... Yari mini sub tech. We will have to see. Of course, with Shogun battleships are quite expensive, fairly difficult to get out, and it just means that this naval yard becomes a prime target because as soon as you lose that, you've invested so much into that structure between the tier two and tier three. It is, in some cases, game winning to just kill off that tier three production facility. In this case, maybe not. But eliminating that refinery, definitely a good move by Kiro. And unfortunately for Kiro, that Defender VX offline a little bit needs to go ahead and transform that. Never mind, the Apollos do skirt away. He's going to have no trouble with that. And look at that Vindicator bomb splitting. Going to be doing just a bit of damage to the refinery. Aircraft Carrier is once again out. Going to be revealing himself by killing off a couple of structures 
or rather units inside of those structures. Yari Minisub going to be going for the kill there, and oh, he gets it! Those aircraft carriers are not having good days. These suicidal Yari Minisubs are getting the exact kills that they need. Kiro being pretty darn efficient with them, man managing to take out a couple of important structures, namely, you know, the refinery, the naval yard, I believe he took out a little bit earlier. Actually gone dual tr three tier three naval yard as uh, he's, he's going to have a hard time actually producing off of all of that stuff with only two refineries and no oil derricks. So Vindy's needs to make sure that his economy is rolling so that he can maintain good production. But on top of that, Kiro, he's kind of stabilized in a pretty big way. And he's also, he's getting himself in a really comfortable position. He does have that Mecha Bay back up and running. Of course, he did lose the tier two, which he had on that Mecha Bay, which means that those, he's going to be mostly relying on those Tangus. They're going to be kind of his bread and butter, which isn't too uncommon for Empire players, but you never want to get stuck on Tangus. You always want to have the option. Of course, you can't just give away Tangus and never build them again, because then in a lot of cases you find Apollo Vindicator combos with Cryocopters can be so, so powerful and hard to deal with. Apollo going to be kind of scouting that Yari Mini, so of course it won't be showing up on the mini-map, but if he's paying attention, he may very well be seeing it. Oh, and those Yari Mini subs. So close to actually just killing off that naval yard. It may end up going down right there. The splash damage does get... And this Yari Minisub may not actually have to sacrifice himself. I don't know if he'll decide to do that anyways. He does indeed. I guess the missiles getting absorbed by the assault carrier or assault destroyer is not what he wants. More Yari Minisubs going to be coming out. Psionic, or not the Psionic Decimator, rather... Proton Collider. All right, Vindes, you're just having a good bit of fun. Also going to be establishing a bit of a base up here in the north. Unfortunately, it will get surrounded and completely destroyed by the Tangus. And now this will kind of put a clock on the game for Vindes, or rather for Kiro, because he knows he's got just a little over five minutes until he's going to be taking quite a bit of damage. Cryoblast going to be firing off on top of that refinery. I don't know if it'll be enough to actually eliminate the refinery. The Vindicator should be swooping in relatively soon here. There's the full sell-off, and that Vindicator, will he actually escape with his life? Yes, he will. Manages to get on out of there without too much trouble. Oh my gosh, he gets down a multi-gunner turret. Vindy's being so, so annoying, but will the 800 credits actually be worth it? AR mini sub basically costs the same. I don't remember if it's 800 or 700, somewhere around there. But at any rate, I don't think that multi-gunner turret was really worth it. It was probably at best just kind of even. It depends on if he got the sell-off of the command hub, because if he didn't get the sell-off of the command hub, then it's going to be probably not worth it or relatively close to just breaking even and not much else. Yari Mini Subs getting pulled back, and once again, we have no real threat to that, to the uh, Proton Collider from Vindy's. A fifth refinery going to be coming out. Still no tier three on this Imperial Docks, which of course means that it's a little bit less of an investment for Kiro, but also he doesn't have any of those Shogun battleships to try to help him deal with this Proton Collider. He could, of course, start firing away at this base, but that aircraft carrier is a bit of an investment for Vindy's and a bit of a safety maneuver for him as well. Apollos will be able to escape unscathed or relatively so. They do escape with their lives, which is the far more important part of that, even though they did take quite a bit of damage. But that aircraft carrier will give an enormous amount of power to Vindy's just with the black uh, black missile weapon alone. Now, can this Yari Mini sub actually be stopped? They do a crazy amount of damage to those refineries. Also going to be calling in the Tank Busters, not a not a ability that we see very often in the Top Secret Protocol. Rather, one Apollo does go down, will be falling, dealing, dealing a little bit of damage to that airfield. But as you can see, that one Tangu is so, so, or that one Javelin Trooper is so, so annoying. May actually end up just killing off that Javelin Trooper. A little bit unfortunate there for Vindy's. However, can Vindy's actually hold this? There's going to be the Black Missile. However, the EMP Missile, will it actually be enough to stop these Tank Busters? One of these Tangus could end up getting focused down these Apollos. They're pretty much going to be going down anyways. If the, if the airfield goes down, will they have anywhere to land? It doesn't matter. All three of the Apollos getting eliminated in this attack. And goodbye, that one Chopper VX. No, the Transform Micro is real. Slamming that F key in just the right amount of time. Selling off a lot of walls. Vindy's trying to salvage as much cost as he can. And actually, this one single Peacekeeper could end up doing a fair amount of damage. Cleans up one of the Tank Busters. The second one gets eliminated by that aircraft carrier. This single Yari Mini Sub still not able to do too much. And Kiro, can he actually break Vindy's at this point? 
He can, of course, go after the Harvesters, and good on Vindy's finally getting around doing a bit of harassment. Not something we've seen him do too much in this game outside of those cryo abilities. And that one Assault Destroyer is doing his level best to try to absorb as many shots as he can, but he won't quite be able to get those shots away from that power plant. And actually, I guess he will, but which means it's actually going to take this this uh, Chopper VX quite a while. But really, Vindy's is just or Kiro is just trying to slow down that Proton Collider, trying to force Vindy's to spend more and more money on those power plants. Goodbye, Assault Destroyer. It was nice knowing you, but this is way too many Yari mini subs. If it comes down to a war of attrition, it's just going to be these Yari mini subs sacrificing themselves to kill off that Assault Destroyer. Although there's going to be the uh, potentially for a sacrifice from Kiro. We'll have to see if he actually does it. No, he is going to be pulling the weakened ones away. Look at that from Kiro. What nice control from him, keeping his units alive like a good commander. What a, what a good guy. And Vindy's has dealt with that attack. He lost the airfield, looks like a couple of power plants, didn't quite lose either one of the refineries, which is really quite important. He's been on such low econ for the majority of this game in comparison with where with where Kiro has been. And these Yara mini subs, they need to make sure that they get out of dodge because they cannot just deal with those multi-gunner turrets. Oh, Cryogeddon actually going to be firing up. They can't deal with the multi-gunner turrets and those assault destroyers all there at the same time. And Vindy's, he doesn't even have to drop a single bomb. Kiro sells everything off the Tangu. Oh, he even gets the Harvester as well. Harvesters are just useless, but I mean, I guess it's taking away some DPS, but that was such a great move by Vindy's. He didn't have to drop any bombs until the last moment, the stuff that Kiro couldn't really sell off. He could have sold, sold off the Defender VX turret, but he decided not to for whatever reason. And I mean, Vindy's... Vindy's wasn't able to do maximum damage because of the sell-off, but at the same time, he was able to do so much damage to the infrastructure. Now, will that actually matter? Because we do have two refineries and the third refinery getting established up here for Kiro. So his economy, as great as it has kind of been in terms of total numbers of refineries, Vindy's has done a good enough job at eliminating a lot of those refineries and making sure that he doesn't give too much of an advantage to his opponent. Whereas this refinery has really been the one that's been going down the most. So many Yari mini sub attacks. And actually, I'm not even sure how efficient some of these attacks are. I think it's like three Yari mini subs. So yeah, that's... I, oh, no, actually, if it's three, then that's not even cost effective. However, if you count lost mining time, it's going to be pretty close to breaking even. It depends, of course, how quickly the ore refinery gets reestablished by Vindy's. But that lost mining time can, in some cases, be the deal breaker for a... For a particular engagement because yeah trading three yari mini subs may not be efficient to kill one or refinery but if you're able to lose you know say two or three minutes of mining time then that's a pretty big deal tsunami tanks in the north going to be doing a bit of damage there that power plant does go down a second power plant gets eliminated by the balloon bombs in kiro again with this attack force moving in able to do a fair amount of damage Peacekeeper in the north potentially could start working away at that refinery, but it'll most likely just get eliminated. So maybe it's better if it doesn't do anything. Now this black EMP missile may be firing off relatively soon here. Actually, yeah, there it is. Locks down all of those tsunami tanks, but can Vindy's actually do anything to clean them up? Yari mini subs down here, not actually going to be doing anything to delay that assault destroyer. Get on the move, assault destroyer. Proton Collider is low power, but where is it firing off? It I'm not actually sure, most likely over here in the main base, but maybe over here at the natch or at the kind of third base location. Where did that actually go? I mean, Vindy's did indeed fire it off. I'm not sure what he used to kill it. Did he? No, he didn't kill the tsunami tanks. He just did. I have no idea what with it. That was weird. I guess he killed something secret that I don't know about. Of course, I will try to capture that later, but... Vindy's, he's down to just two refineries. I mean, low econ mode for the win for Vindy's. We'll have to see if he's actually able to make something happen. He has managed to hold on to this Proton Collider for so, so long. And, oh, Yari Mini Subs absorbing a couple of these shots. And the Black Hole Armor will allow these Assault Destroyers to live for a little bit longer. This, this one Tsunami Tank may be the hero that these Assault Destroyers need. No, I guess not. He does get the kill on one Assault Destroyer. And those Imperial Warriors, there's just enough of a gap there. But, oh, goodbye. Whoa, that's a fully heroic Vindicator. Not something you see very often. Despite losing the airfield multiple times, Vindy still has managed to get a heroic Vindicator, which is, of course, kind of his namesake. Vindy's Vindicator. 
you gotta you gotta admit that if anyone gets a heroic vindicator it should be vindy's Peacekeeper's moving out on the map. Vindy's really going light on the infantry for the majority of this game. Of course, there's been lots of Tangus mixed in as well. And two of the two of the tank busters do get eliminated. Three still do survive, which is quite enough for uh, for a deadly attack force. However, that Peacekeeper also just getting trashed. And how many Vindicators does Vindy's actually have? He's got two fully heroic and an elite Apollo. That's a crazy amount of... An of aircraft damage output that guy just fell right through the ground he doesn't even need a grave he's already six feet under and he tripped to get there which is really quite sad for him you know most people want to be buried by their loved ones but no he just fell right into the ground no no real ceremony for him but at least he didn't you know decay like so many other units out on the battlefield where they die and then they just sort of fall through the floor i don't even know what that means anymore however yari mini subs again how efficient are these attacks coming out from Kiro? The answer, most likely not very efficient. Oh, goodbye, Vindicator. We will miss you. I don't know if you were one of the heroic ones. Yep, yep, it looks like he only, he doesn't have any extra Vindicators. So he lost one of his fully heroic Vindicators and those, those Tangus not even getting ranked up from that. So they're pretty tough, but this Apollo also potentially getting trashed. No, he does manage to escape with a heroic status. Goodbye, last Vindicator. We will miss you. And he gets completely destroyed. Those Chopper VX is so brutal. Getting fully heroic status. And will this be the end of all things for Vindy's? We'll have to see this. One Hydrofoil is going to be ranking up really quite quickly. The Transform Micro is not real from, uh, from Kiro. Actually, Micro at all is not real from Kiro right now. But the Power Down is definitely going to be happening. And so, so annoying. Kira may just be able to finish things off. There's not a whole lot of anti-air messing around up here. This is vulnerable. This is vulnerable. That is vulnerable. All three of these structures could be focused down with relative ease. Now, we'll have to see the Hydrofoil. Is he able to get into good positioning and actually lock down some of these units? The answer for now is no. It is a fully elite Hydrofoil, though, potentially on the verge of going heroic. Goodbye, last power plant. That's get el that gets eliminated as well. And these Hydrofoils, they're still just doing enough damage. I don't even know how those missiles are getting absorbed way the heck over there. That Black Hole armor is absolutely crazy town. The Hydrofoil finally on top of these units. Going to be eliminated. One, two, and number three. No, he doesn't actually get the third Chopper VX. This is so, so dangerous for Vindy's potentially. Why is he not just going after the Ore Refiner? I mean, as long as that is on power down mode, the Ore Refinery is the far more important structure. However, he will be getting both most likely as long as another Hydrofoil doesn't end up coming out to save the day for Vindy's. Goodbye, Proton Collider. That's like two fully heroic Chopper VX. is not something you see very often, and Kiro should be able to wrap things up with relative ease. Vindy's has been defeated. And man, I guess this confirms it. Cabana Republic, Imba for Empire. And let's take a look at these wonderful graphs. Now let's find out how right or wrong I was. Yes, I was right. Throughout this game, I've been talking about how behind economically Vindy's was. I did not expect it to be this close. Let's take a quick look at the total resources. 30,000 credits spread out across 20 minutes, and the majority of that is coming... That's relatively split over the majority over the course of the game, but after, let's say, 9 minutes, that's where the majority of the difference comes in for this 30,000 credits. Overall, I mean, the unit kill-to-death ratio for Vindy is a little bit higher, but again, Kiro, 30,000 more credits to play with over the course of this game. He's been... Somewhat aggressive throughout this game. Some good early strikes for Vindy's, but it wasn't enough to stop Kiro with those, like, four refineries kind of in the early game, early to mid game. I guess it was more the mid game, but he took some damage early on in, the, in terms of time of this game. And then he was just able to power on through with that. Lost a lot of infrastructure, but Vindy's was not able to seal the deal. Kiro was able to just put on that constant pressure throughout the majority of the game, do a lot of damage, and kind of lock down the economy of Vindy's in a number of ways. But that will be doing it for this game. Of course, I thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cybert, signing out.